Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're going to be discussing some of the worst throws for street self-defense. So, judo is highly effective and destructive on the streets. However, while attempting some of these throws, you can find yourself in a very bad position. So, I put up a few criteria, and they are the following. First of all, is finding yourself in a very bad position. Sometimes it does not work, and you have put yourself in a very bad position. Number two is risk of being ineffective, sloppy and slow. And finally, you can actually injure yourself. And that's the main one. So number five, it's going to be Yoko Gake. Yoko Gake, the big risk is finding yourself in a bad position while at the same time affecting it in a very sloppy way. Um, it's, it can be very effective and dangerous. Just watch Uke's head as it bounces off the mat so this is a very effective uh, throw to do but it can be done you know sliding down while not so much of a swift sweep downwards and that can pause a lot of danger for you now unless you're doing this variation of yokogake like a diving sasai a lot can go wrong and let me show you just a few competition example um, Yokogake can score easily, but it cannot be as effective. Here you see blue could have landed on top of white, and at the same time, the impact is very weak. Here is another example where you can actually land on top of them. And here is the best, in my opinion, where he lands on top. And number four, it's going to be Ukiwaza. Ukiwaza is a high scoring technique. However, the problem with street self-defense is that you are collapsing yourself underneath them and the impact of the throw can be very low. So you're risking of uh, ineffectiveness and also bad positioning. You are removing your leg out of the way so you can give them a very advantageous uh, position. Um, unless you have mastered this throw, do not attempt it so unless it's your tokui waza or your favorite technique or your best technique do not attempt it uh, just because you find yourself in that position so and also a lot of things can play uh, a role like you know size difference weight difference etc uh, the next one is in the same breath it's going to be yoko wakare yoko wakare the bad thing about it is you're removing both legs out of the way and we both know how legs can be uh, important playing guard just in case things uh, don't go your way also just using them to kick so i do advocate for this in competition uh, as a counter technique because you can find yourself rolling off a seoyenage or a hip toss or a foot sweep and from there you can use it as a counter here is an example against a foot sweep where you can actually just lay down and use your hand to finish the throw. I'm not saying this is completely ineffective. Here is a great example where you can land on top and at the same time have great impact. So this throw can be effective. However, very rarely mastered and very rarely people use it to score. Uh, number two, it's going to be Kawazugake. Kawazugake. You can risk all three of the criterias. You can risk uh, finding yourself in a bad position, mainly uh, on their side where you can, they can just roll on top of you. And number two, it can be done slowly where it can be ineffective or low impact. And three, with the leg entanglement, so many things can go wrong, not just for them, but also for you. So Kawazugake meets all three criterias of a bad throw pursuit self-defense not saying is ineffective it is banned for a reason but there are so many things that can go wrong and finally number one i don't care what anyone says as much of a high scoring technique this is tani otoshi would be in my opinion the worst for you if you are trying to defend yourself you can snap your knee if they uh, collapse on top of it you can find yourself in a bad position and of course it can be simply ineffective here with the leg grab and back in the day was great 
for great impact. Um, but here you can see they can bump their head. Of course, it's a very effective throw, but you can find yourself uh, meeting all three criterias. So great Sutemi for the street is a great example is Tomoenage. Tomoenage, your legs are in the way. Uh, just in case it does not work, you can lock their arm. You can uh, perform a triangle choke. And in case, which is the worst case scenario, if you find yourself stuck underneath them, your legs can always protect you via leg lock, leg entanglement, or heel hook, or just kicking them in the face can be just destructive. So, uh, Tomoenage, it's a classic for a reason, uh, done on the battlefield and on the streets, not just on the mats. Great examples of Sutemi in a street is any type of Makikomi. Makikomi are destructive, they have great impact, they have low risk. If you have them, you know, narrowed down, and also they can be just simply destructive, and you can land in a great position. Just watch this Uchimata Makikomi performed here by uh, Sumio Endo. So, a lot of great throws can be performed horribly, even the best ones like hip tosses. But in my opinion, if I have to narrow down, um, it's gonna, it's gonna be in the Sutemi family because of the, you know, high risk of bad positioning and of course the ineffectiveness and of course injuring yourself. Snapping your knee in mid street fight is the last thing you want like Kawazu Gake or Tani Otoshi. Tani Otoshi, of course, it's a high scoring technique, but it's just the worst when it comes to risk versus reward. Uh, I believe uh, Shintaro spoke of this uh, in one of his videos, but I would not recommend it on the mats or either uh, on the streets. There are, of course, honorable mentions like uh, Kani Basami, Kani Basami, you can, if they're big and you do not collapse them, they can just easily slam you down. Um, it, so many things can happen uh, in so many throws, but I believe that Sutemi will always be with the highest risk because you're putting yourself in a very bad position and some of them can cause risk uh, of injury for you and not just for them. So, if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive content. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.